Welcome to the latest episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. My name is Brad Cooper, and I'll be your host. Now, last month, we had Dr. Alan Castell discussing how to reduce the declines as we age, how to keep things from, from dropping off as fast and different things you can do around that. But what about the other side of the coin? What about instead of simply limiting the decline, we were able to, or we were able to help our clients actually optimize our pursuits even as we age? Well, that's where today's guest, Ken Ola, comes in. Ken is a multiple-time Ironman, including the Hawaii Ironman World Championship last year in Kona, Hawaii. He's also competed in the U.S. National Championships and multiple half Ironmans or 70.3s. Oh, by the way... Ken just celebrated his 75th birthday, and yet that's the life he's living. Now, we had Dr. Carla Mann on in early March discussing all the research behind challenge and threat, and I think you pick up a little bit of this as you listen to Ken speak. He's not looking at the threat of aging. He's excited about the challenge of what's next, and I think there's a lesson in there for all of us. So if you or or your clients are thinking you're, in quotes, too old, folks, this is our wake-up call. And what a fun wake-up call it is. Just a quick reminder for those of you who have been considering the Rocky Mountain Coaching Retreat and Symposium up in Estes Park, Colorado, this September 6th through the 8th. If you're serious about it, and it may not be for you, but if you're serious about it, get on the website as soon as possible and get registered because that big discount window It's about to wrap up. So that's CatalystCoachingInstitute.com. Just click on the retreat tab and you'll see it. CatalystCoachingInstitute.com. As always, reach out to us if you have any questions, things you want to talk about. Try to figure out what's this coaching certification all about. How does it fit with your career? Whatever. The email is results at CatalystCoachingInstitute.com. Now, on with the latest episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. Ken Ola, it's so fun to have you on the podcast today. I think the lessons we're going to learn across the board from this discussion are going to be fun. So thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. You're really welcome. Talk us through a little bit about your background. The audience knows some of the the basics, but what led to you doing triathlons well into your mid-70s now? I really didn't do a lot of exercises until I was probably, you know, in my 40s and it was just kind of something was convenient. I moved to a plant that had a YMCA next door to it or close to it. And uh, my boss said, uh, why don't we go to the Y for lunch? And I said, well, if the boss wants to go to the Y for lunch, I'm going. So, <laughs> so, and, you know, I, I wasn't really opposed to exercise, but I, it just wasn't fitting into my schedule. So all of a sudden it fit into my schedule. I never thought about it. And then, so we would go to the Y and we would do some running and uh, it worked out good. And then we'd just go back to work and eat our lunch at at the desk and uh, go from there. So um, we just, I started doing that and maybe I had a, then I had a little bit of knee injury. So then I switched to swimming. And then one day my wife said, look what I bought at a garage sale. It's a bike. (laughs) Oh, really? What'd it cost? Well, $10. Well, I'll try it out. Whatever. It is. <laughs> a Sears bike, five speed. And so, you know, I tried that out. And, you know, deep inside me, there's also a, a desire to compete. And mm. I, I like the feeling of speed. Um, and the feeling of speed and actually causing it yourself. Mm. I have another issue that I deal with. As I, I, I like motorcycles, too. But I, uh, so got the bike and said, Hey, you know, this is kind of fun. I'm getting a workout and I'm getting some speed out of it too. And also what I noticed and why, you know, I questioned myself, why do I like to work out? There was just a feeling after a workout that it's hard to identify, but I just mm. felt good yeah. being hot, picking up a sweat and afterwards it just felt good. So we went from that, got this, the, the bike. And then, uh, you know, one day we're watching television. And we saw on TV, and this is in the 80s, like mid-80s, like 84, uh, there was what they called the triathlon. And I watched that, and I'd never even seen it before. And I said, well, there's there's women, and they're biking, and they're running. 
and there's people of all ages. So I don't have to be 25 years old and compete in something. Hmm. That's old. So, hey, that'd be something we could try. And so my wife said, well, we'll do it together. And so we found one. We signed up for one in 1984 and uh, did some training. I took the fenders off the garage sale bike so I'd look really cool. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, don't think, I didn't see any bike. And a trial. I didn't see a lot of bikes with fenders on them. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. So anyway, we 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 did it. It was like uh, it was at Lake Okoboji in Iowa, and it was like uh, you know a mile swim and an eighteen mile bike around the lake, and then a six mile run. And we survived it. And uh, I thought, well, this is kind of fun. I like I like to work out and like to compete. So it looks like something I could do. So we just started doing it and uh, really didn't do a lot of it, you know, because I had a job and everything that sure. you do a couple of year. And then actually, as I got older and I think it was 95, I asked my son, you know, I'm doing this triathlon. Do you want to try it? Well, okay, I'll give it a try. So in you know, 95, we did one together. And then since then, <laughs> It grew with him, and he has now done 16 Ironmans in Hawaii. So that that really worked out good. So, yeah, you, get, you got to start nicely, Dad. One, yeah. So and now he's the one that's pushing me. As I get older, towards retirement and things like that, and having more time to train, you know, I always had in the back of my mind maybe someday I could even do Hawaii Ironman. But at at my age and those age groups, I was nowhere near. You know, you need to be like you know right at the top to do that. But right. there's an advantage of getting older. <laughs> there's there's a little less competition, and as I got older, I was getting closer to uh, being able to um, qualify. And then finally, using uh, using age to my advantage, <laughs> I. <laughs> and there is an advantage as you get older, certain goals, uh, that's because there's, as you, as you start, and what I say sometimes is 80% of life is showing up. I've sure. heard that, someone said that. So you start showing up and you're going to make it. So finally, I started showing up and starting doing better in my age group. And in 2000, uh, well, in 2018, everything was aligned. I was just entering this the uh, new age 75 group. age group. I was the youngest guy in the group, and I looked at some races that, you know, set some competition. And so, uh, I qualified at Texas in April. Um, I was first place, and then uh, got to go to Hawaii. So my goal in o- October of 2018, I I made it to Hawaii. So, so cool. But there's a lot of stuff going on in between there that makes it, you know, it, you've, you've had a goal, you know, the less competition, but now there's a lot of other things that need to be done to get that done. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. There is less competition. Now you're competing <laughs> against more injuries. Now you're competing against more variables. Now you're competing against all right. these things. So somebody that's in their 30s and 40s, yeah, they have more people out there on the course but they have less variables in their life as you get into 60s 70s 80s there are all these other variables and you overcame those things right and and, you know how do you overcome those variables you know talk about some strategies one of them is you can't do it by yourself yeah as you get older you need support you need support from family um i had great support my wife's a swim instructor (laughs) You know, she even did the first triathlon with me, so that doesn't hurt. I got support there. And so, I mean, if you're going to go out and train for four or five hours, you better have a spouse that understands why you're gone. So, and then I, you know, my son, who is you know an outstanding triathlete, gives me all the advice, and he supplied me with the right equipment. You mentioned something that kind of has me intrigued here because a lot of the folks listening have parents that may be in their late 50s, mid 60s, 70s. Yeah. And it's and you mentioned that Tim's encouragement 
played a pretty big role with this. Can you talk us through what worked with that? Because it doesn't help to nag anybody. It never has. It never will. But, never but what approach did he take that did help in terms of that encouragement that made really, a difference for you? i tell you what really helped is, and you can't tell people, hey, dad, you need to do exactly. this. Once you hear that, you know, it, you know, turn that off. Right. But subtly he said, dad, and this was back in 2016, he said, Dad, what you need, and I've always had, you know, injury here, injury there, well, I need to walk, and I need to run, sure. and all this other stuff. He said, Dad, what you need is some professional help. You need a coach. And I'm saying, well, I need a coach. I know what to do. Right. You know, him and I work with him, he says, no, it's, you know, at this point now, you need, you know, someone that can really help you get through this and understands what's going on with aging and recovery. So he recommended a coach, and that was uh, Kelly Philno, Philno Coaching. And I started with her in 16, and I'm still with her right now. And we just, every day, what to do, every day varies We're in communication. The key thing I learned as you get older and where my mistakes were and the issue is I like to work out. Well, if you like to work out, then you're going to push yourself and push yourself and you don't recover and you right. don't do work very well and you get a lot of injuries. Right. So what I've learned now is there's more recovery going on, more strength training versus just aerobics. All these other things are happening. And I really, you know, I still have injuries, but I'm recovering a lot better. Thanks for bringing that up. That's, it's interesting. You mentioned you knew how to swim, you knew how to bike, you knew how to run, but pulling it all together sure. with the help of your coach made a big difference. Yeah. I think the wellness coaches are nodding their heads because they're, they're saying, oh my gosh, that's exactly my clients. Uh, they know how to yeah. sleep. They know how to you know, manage stress. They know how to eat better. Yeah. But our conversations is what takes that from being knowledge to being application. So yeah, that's right. good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so a little more philosophical here. We live in society, sure. obviously, where people are generally encouraged to, and I'm using quote marks here, slow down or take it easy as we get into our 60s, 70s, even late 50s. You just celebrated 75 years. And I looked at your list. You've You've really competed. I mean, you've done two full Ironmans, including the World Championship. You've done several halves. You've been very competitive. Your time at Texas was fantastic, my friend. What yeah. words of advice, more generally, not, not triathlon specific, but yeah. more generally, what, what words of advice would you have for those entering the second half of their life in terms of activity, competition, fitness, any of those things? For, for the person 50 plus, 60 plus, what general words of advice would you have for them? You know, the, the general words of advice is, you know, if you're 50, 60 plus, you can still do what you want to do. Uh, yes, you have to do some adjustments for your body and things like that, but, and pick something that you enjoy. Mm. You know, if you're going to pick something mm. I don't like, you pick something you enjoy and go ahead and do it, but don't overdo it. And that's where I see people having problems. Well, I went out there and I went out and played some pickup basketball and then I twisted my knee. Mm. Well, you got to be realistic. There's a lot of things you can do to be active and just take it easy in the beginning and just work your way up. Mm. So good. Something you enjoy and ease, ease it on. Yeah, up. I mean, That's... not everybody enjoys triathlon. I get okay. a lot of blank stares from people up at the triathlon. <laughs> I feel like it's, why do you do that? I mean, I have some, not my close relatives, distant relatives. Why don't you just take a break? <laughs> <laughs> take a break. I mean, have you ever thought about that? Oh, I love is, it. Another question like, what does your doctor say about what you're doing? Isn't that funny? And that's a good question. I asked my doctor, what do you think? And he says, if you can do it, do it. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. We're, we're seeing more of this. We're seeing more and more people. I just saw, uh, what was it? A guy in it, it's 90 run a 90 second, 400 meters he had yeah. multiple people in their eighties run sub three hours in the marathon. Now, wh what, what do you think's going on? Why, why are we seeing so much more of this with people in their seventies, eighties, even nineties doing the things that you're doing? What, what, what do you think's going on there? I, I think in my opinion is 
they're seeing more. I mean, there's more publicized that, hey, this can be done. Mm. And and I'm I, and so you, I think you're seeing more that, hey, you know, at any age, there's people that are doing it and you're no different than them. Mm. And they can they can get it done. Yeah. You know, I could drag a little bit because, uh, you know, the media did use me as an example. Mm hmm. And then the example was when I started training for the first Iron Ironman in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. I had a set. I had a setback. I started with my coach in April. She had everything laid out. We're gonna we're gonna do this. It was uh, the Florida Ironman. I have another interest of mine, and it was in the garage. And it's a um, it's a sport motorcycle. Mm -hmm. I would take, I did, I didn't go ride on the road. I, I don't think that's safe, it's, but I would take it to the track and then just do practicing. And I've been doing it for, you know, six or seven years. Remember I said, I have a need for speed. I like the bike. Well, that's right. the motorcycle really satisfy the need for speed. So anyway, on mother's day in 2016, I had just finished the day before a triathlon was at the track practicing and let's just say I got over aggressive and I missed the turn at 80 miles an hour and went into the dirt. Mm, that doesn't Bottom end well. line is, did it end well. I was laying in the dirt, took a quick inventory of what worked and what didn't work. The legs worked pretty good. So I was very happy with that. The right arm worked pretty good, but the left one didn't. And I detected some fluid in my lungs. Mm. That kind of compressed what happened here. I broke some ribs. Punctured the lung, punctured the spleen, shattered my uh, my shoulder blade. And this is this is May of 2016, and I'm scheduled to do an Ironman in November. We started the healing process and um, had an operation to fix my shoulder blade. And I asked the doctor, I said, you know, I got this Ironman scheduled in November. What do you think? He <laughs> says, what do you think about that? He's, he looked at this x-ray, he says, you need full range of motion to swim. I said, yes, I do. He says, well, the only way you can get that, if I get back in there and put some metal in there and straighten things out, and I can do it in two days. I mean, I'll, I'll get you scheduled right away. Right. So, so he scheduled me. I had the operation, told my coach we're going to wait a while till I could start swimming again and doing things. So we gradually built back up and had the operation in June. And about mid-July, I started swimming again and started getting going. It went from zero back up and I did do the Ironman. You know, you can make it if you try. Well, and, and it's interesting because that is such a cool story and, and the different people that we were talking about that are doing that and they're again, 70s, 80s, 90s. But at the other end of the spectrum, we're seeing this huge part of the population completely missing out on the joy of, of having a life of health and fitness. Why, why, why do you think that is? What, what do you think is going on there? That there's such the dichotomy. You have this small percentage that are going beyond, but then you have the majority that are not enjoying this great opportunity. Right. And I, you know, I kind of look at my peers, you know, I'm in a rotary club, a lot of people my similar age, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, how many of this group are, well, there's another person that I know that, that does some triathlon, but most of them are not. Now, the Ones I see my age that have changed over, usually it ended up being some kind of a significant emotional event that said, oh, oh, I think I need to start doing something or uh, I'm going to have some health issues. So I've known a couple that to really get them going, they weren't interested. I think they looked at exercise as painful, but then due to, let's say, some health events, it turned around really quick. They said, oh, and now I do see the benefit. And somehow, if we could have somehow got to them sooner, they wouldn't have needed that right. event, which is you know, a heart event or, yeah. Most of them were some some health events that said, you know, you need to uh, change your ways. Something that had to flip the switch instead of them choosing it, it was almost forced on them. And then they realized that after that, the, the benefits. That's do it. So I'm saying, how do I get the people that say, some people have this wall of fear, mm. well, it can be painful, and how do you tell them that once you break through the wall of fear, things are pretty good on the other side? Yeah, very cool. Talk us <laughs> through a day in the life of Ken Ola in terms of exercise, weight training, nutrition, and sleep patterns. I think where I need to improve is probably on sleep. I'll go to bed at 10.30. I will get up at 
4.30, do some stretching, a little strength training exercises. I have one issue I'm working on with the plantar fasciitis, which is getting better, but I do those exercises even if it gets better. I do those exercises every morning to make sure that's still in good shape. Do some stretching, go down, have breakfast. I'm a big fan of oatmeal and bananas and maybe some other fruit. I like eggs, so I'll throw a couple hard-boiled eggs, get that all done. Do just a few more pre-swimming exercises. Go to the YMCA. I'll probably swim. My schedule is for like 2,000 yards. Takes me about an hour. And then I will hop in the car. I do volunteer work for the uh, adult education. And that's where I'll spend the morning with uh, individuals that are trying to learn English. They're from all over the world. So I, I work with them for a while. I find it very rewarding. I'm one-on-one seeing some progress. And then I'll come home. Usually my lunches, um, I'm in the peanut butter, jelly, wheat bread, maybe a little fruit and cheese. And then uh, I probably do some more strength training. See, tomorrow I'll probably do lower body strength training and then take a break from that and work on other stuff. And then for dinner, usually I like vegetables and either for protein, I'll either go for a turkey or a, or a fish. And then I can't resist a nice Sunday. Don't <laughs> then I'll have, but I'll stick a banana in there, make a banana split. Nice. And then, but you know, every, every morning, you know, I weigh myself to see am I on target, off target, where I want to be and how I'm going to do my eating. So that's it. And then I'll check on my workout. The fu- and then the swimming's over. So the next workout will probably be either biking or a combination of biking and running the next day. And so works out. And then on the weekends, then there's a longer workout involved. Right. What I, you know, I, I get rewards not only from exercise, but from the one-on-one contact. So I, I go to a, a senior center and I have a friend there and a group get together. So we play dominoes at the senior center and he, they call me the link to the outside. So, <laughs> so they say, "Here is my, here comes my link to the outside world." Because these it. people don't get out too much. So we talk about that. And you know, if you bring up the exercises, what you do, oh, that's interesting. Although there's a couple there that do. We we talk about certain things, and you know, we spend a little time with that. And then after that. Since I'm a water guy, an exercise guy, I have an evening class where I go to where there's special needs kids, teenagers, Mm -hmm. that I work with them in the water or exercise. And and it's always a goal to increase communication. Look, what's the key to this person? How can I communicate with them through exercise? The bottom line, how can I make exercise fun for somebody else? So we always try to make it fun. Great strategy. What keeps you motivated day after day, year after year, especially in this world where mediocrity is just fine? Everybody's like, yeah, come on, you're fine, you're fine. Why do you need to do all that stuff? What keeps you motivated in that kind of a setting where everybody around you is saying, really? Why are you doing this stuff? I don't know if I'm special. Maybe I'm just lucky that I just having fun. I mean, I enjoy. Do I enjoy exercise? Enjoy. I enjoy the feeling afterwards. You know, now that, you know, I'm retired, I have more time. I think it's really tough. Someone has a full-time job. It's a little tougher to do all these things. So I'm taking advantage of my age mm-hmm. by just, hey, this is fun. Do I enjoy going down and work out? I do. You know, is there any time where I'm, well, do I really want to do this? I, the, the question, it only happens first thing in the morning. I get up and I'm thinking, now, wait a minute. So and then I have to go through that little wall. Once I get through the wall, I'm rocking. And it's yeah. the same thing in the triathlon. It's, it's the wall. My wall in the triathlon is when I first jump in the water. Hmm. And maybe it's 60 degrees. It's cold. Here I'm thinking, you know, wait a minute. What's happening here? <laughs> what am I doing here? So what am I doing here in the middle of the, in, like in Hawaii, what am I doing in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with all these people swimming around me, hitting me in the head? Uh, do I really want to do this? And I say, go for it. So cool. What advice would you have for the person that's sitting there listening to this and they're they're sitting on the couch and they're thinking, you know, that's great for Ken, but I'm so out of shape. It's been so long. It's not even worth trying. Just go a little bit at a time. Hey, let's take a walk around the block. Yeah, just go in something like that. Just try something. Start out and you'd be surprised how good you feel. A lot of people, I know a lot of people, Walking seems to work just fine. 
Sure. And you get the sites and stuff like that. So look for the thing we talked about. Look for the thing. If you're going to do something, you could enjoy, see some reward in it. You know, what I do, you can get really on board. Pick a good movie, get on the bike, mm. and you can get two things done at the same time. <laughs> you know, I can watch a good movie, but you can be on the bike. And you get a little distracted, and you're having a good time. You can be on a treadmill, watch movies. In Minnesota, where I'm at, biking, you don't get out much in the winter. A lot of training is done in the basement. The race I did last year in Texas, the qualify, in yeah. the end of April. Yeah, down in Houston. Um, yeah, we had our last snowstorm in mid-April. Yeah. And so, so instead of me going for a bike ride the week before the race, uh, my wife has a video of me blowing snow. So everything, I think I spent maybe a half hour outside before Houston. But yeah. it's okay. You can do, you can train. You can train in the basement. It's working, my friend. So similarly, yeah. what advice would you have for a health and wellness coach who's working with a client who might be hesitant to get started? And maybe it's the same advice, or maybe there's something else that comes to mind. My daughter, I guess she's a personal trainer. And so she deals a lot with beginning people that are just trying to work. They just want to do, do something, you know, interview them. You know, what do you like to do? A light bulb might come up that, oh, wait a minute, you did do that. You kind of enjoy that. So you kind of there's a little bit of, you know, background work as, and, and I'm sure they'll do that, you know, interview what they've done in the past, what's worked, what's not worked for them, what they've seen, they enjoyed, and then key on something like that. And you can build from there. Great advice. Last question, my friend. One of the things that seems to be so different about you is you have this clear vision. You know where you want to go. You know where you're heading. You, you get that focused in and then you move forward. Tell us about the next five years. My next major goal is there is a full Ironman in Madison, Wisconsin in September. My son and I are going to do that together. So cool. Poss possibly, you know, we could qualify. So yeah. it's going to take a lot of preparation, but it's going to be fun. And whatever happens, happens. But I always know I give it my best. And my son and I were talking about this. No matter what happens, if I can get most of the race done, I've never not finished one, at least I know I got a good workout in. <laughs> that's the very so you need to get we, we even talked about it and we've never didn't finish a race but we always say as long as we get to the point in a race where we've had a good workout we're ahead of the game that's so awesome you know in the future i shouldn't look look forward to being 80 but at 80 i'm again at the beginning yeah. of an age group so i've got, i've got an advantage all the all, all the other people in that age group I love it. I love it. This is so good. Ken, thanks for joining us. This was, I think people are going to sure. hear this and just reset their bar. They're just going to say, wait, wait, wait a minute. I remember what Ken said. He's looking forward to turning 80 because then dot, dot, dot. Thanks for, right. thanks yeah, for that motivator. I know this is going to go a long way and we'll need to check in after Ironman Wisconsin and see how things went. Sure. Anytime. Looking forward to it. That sounds great. Thanks so much, Ken. Yeah. I like to think these are the good old days. Did you catch all those great nuggets? I mean, he didn't start until he was in his 40s. He got encouragement, but not a push from his son. And then down the road, he was actually the encouragement to his son, who's become an incredibly successful triathlete. He talked about picking something you enjoy. Now, I think we get that personally, but oftentimes with others, we may use words like should, you should do this. That doesn't work long term. It's got to be something you get to do, not something you've got to do. One letter difference massive impact. And then just doing a little bit at a time, not trying to jump in too fast, causing those injuries, those kinds of things. So really some great advice from Ken. So much appreciate him joining us. And wow, what an inspiration. The next Wellness Coach Certification Fast Track Weekends are coming up in mid-August in New Jersey, August 16th and 17th, and in Colorado the following weekend, August 24th and 25th. If you've got any questions about that, if you want to look into details, it's on our new website at catalystcoachinginstitute.com. And just a side note, we're happy to bring the fast track to your state or your organization. That's, that's how we ended up scheduling this New Jersey course is an organization wanted us to bring it to them. And so we did. And then part of that is we open it up to outside 
uh, attendees. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Results at Catalyst Coaching institute.com. We can provide you all the details and, and how that might work. I just want to say thank you for your encouragement. The emails, the, the notes we're getting about this podcast have been so nice. So thank you for those of you who've taken the time to do that. And I'm told the subscribers that you rock. I, again, I don't know how this all works, but that supposedly really helps the, the podcast. So thank you to those of you who, who've gone that extra mile and actually subscribe to it. We have some awesome guests coming up in the coming weeks. With that, let's tie a ribbon on this one. Thanks again to Ken Ola. Definitely provided a great example for us in terms of the pursuit of better. Make it a great week, and I'll speak with you soon on the next episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. <music>